Welcome to another episode of Kurdistan This Week, where we bring you the latest in the Kurdistan region from NRT Studios in Somani. On Wednesday, the U.S. State Department ordered non-emergency U.S. government employees to leave the embassy and the consulate in Erbil as a result of what is, uh, it is said to be an increased threat from Iranian proxies in Iraq. Two days earlier, the U.S. released a security alert warning U.S. citizens to avoid traveling to the country due to heightened tensions. It comes as the White House is working to increase pressure on Iran a year after withdrawing from the nuclear deal that had been signed along with European allies, China, and Russia. It recently moved a number of military assets into the Persian Gulf region, including an aircraft carrier group, B-52 bombers, and Patriot missile batteries. The U.S. also suspending, suspended training operations with the Iraqi military in the Kurdish Peshmerga, which it conducts as a part of the anti-ISIS coalition. Germany and the Netherlands also said that they were for temporarily suspending their training missions, but stressed that they were not changing the diplomatic posture at their embassies and consulates. The UK also raised its threat level and walked back comments made by one of its generals that appeared to contradict US statements about the threat posed by Iranian-backed militias. New Generation President Sashwar Abdullahid was arrested by, uh, by order of an Asaish judge on Thursday after he appeared in court in Sulmani, his lawyer said. NRT Digital Media reporter Isan Sabir said that Abdul Wahid was taken into custody on charges of violating Article 2 of the Communication Devices Misuse Law, and that Abdul Wahid had denied the accusations during the hearing. It was not immediately clear where Abdul Wahid was being held. The movement slammed the arrest in a statement saying that the case against its leader had been concocted by its political opponents. The charges stem from lawsuits filed against Abdul Wahid by the public prosecutor and new generation lawmaker in the Kurdistan parliament, Shadi Nozad, who alleged last month that people close to Abdul Wahid had attempted to blackmail her by threatening to release private videos of her and other movement MPs who had been critical of the leadership. Following the reactivation of the Kurdistan region's presidency law last week, five people have been nominated for the office. Current Kurdistan regional government Prime Minister Nechervan Barzani was nominated by the Kurdistan Democratic Party and will also have the support of the Patriotic Union of Kurdistan and the Goran movement and is seen as the prohibitive frontrunner. Four political independents have also nominated themselves. The nominations will formally be announced on Sunday after the nominee's credentials are examined. The Kurdistan Islamic Group Kurdistan Islamic Union and New Generation said that they would neither field a candidate nor support Barzani, calling the decision to reactivate the law a mistake. On Thursday, an explosion hit a convoy carrying personnel from Turkey's intelligence agency, or MIT, in the Kurdistan region's Ahmadi district. NRT digital media reporter Nihad Oramari said that five MIT members were wounded when a planted bomb hit the convoy in Sarsing subdistrict at 11 a.m. There were around 40 MIT members in two buses that were headed to Dehuk after completing a six-month deployment, the reporter added. The wounded were transferred to Dehuk Hospital. Turkish bombardment in the Kurdistan region's Barzan area on Wednesday killed one civilian. Local resident Mohamed Salah told NRT Digital Media that 50-year-old Kazim Ali had gone to Botin Mountain to collect wild vegetables. Turkish warplanes bombed the area after clashes erupted with the Kurdistan Workers' Party, and Ali was killed. The Turkish army later allowed 20 civilians to, to collect his body. Meanwhile, an NRT digital media reporter said that a Turkish intelligence aircraft crashed in a field in the Kashadshe community in Ahmadi district. Turkish warplanes later bombed the area twice to destroy the plane. Turkey has recently increased the frequency of its strikes on targets in the Kurdistan region. Finally, people with disabilities protested in Sulmani on Monday about the paltry payments that they received from the government saying that they cannot afford food and basic necessities. The protesters symbolically burned tablecloths and said that the government's policies were making life impossible for them. This is the latest in a string of protests by people with disabilities who say that what the government provides is inefficient to live on and that they face discrimination when they try to find work. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Kurdistan This Week. If you'd like more information on these stories and others, check out our website, 
nrttv.com forward slash en, and be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.